Recently, I spent a day with Florian Venom Kohler, filming some stuff with Pubo Huang in super slow motion. In this video, I show everything we captured for various types of jump shots. Before beginning, if you want help with jump shot technique, see my Jump Like a Pro video and other jump shot links in the video description. The first thing we did was compare various cue and tip combinations to see why a jump cue is so much more effective than a longer and heavier cue with a softer tip. We tested a full range of cues between a short and light jump cue with a phenolic tip to a heavy masse cue with a soft tip. Here are the reasons why a good jump cue makes it easier to jump the cue ball. A jump cue is shorter to make it easier to hold it in the elevated cue position required for a legal jump shot. It is lighter to make it easier to generate cue speed quickly. Also, when the tip hits the ball, the lighter weight will limit how much the cue goes forward, giving the cue ball more room to clear the tip after the hit and bounce. The hard tip makes the hit more efficient, giving more speed to the cue ball for a given cue speed. And it also results in a shorter tip contact time, again giving the cue ball more room to clear. For more information, see the jump cue link in the video description. Here's the jump shot attempt with the jump cue. In super slow motion, you can see the action of the shot, with the cue ball quickly separating from the tip and easily clearing the tip after the bounce. Here's the break cue. It is possible to jump over a full ball with a break cue, but with a similar effort as the previous stroke, the break cue does not generate as much jump height. Here's the playing cue. It is much tougher to jump with a typical playing cue. Here's the masse cue, which is the most difficult to jump with due to the heavy weight and soft tip. Venom used much more stroke effort and still came up short. In super slow motion, you can see the tip staying in contact longer with the cue moving forward more, not giving the cue ball enough room to clear the tip after the bounce. Here's a direct comparison with the jump cue so you can clearly see the difference. Again, the lighter jump cue with the harder tip allows the cue ball to separate quicker and with more clearance. The next thing we looked at was unintentional scoop shots. Here's an example where Venom is attempting to jump the cue ball over an obstacle ball but unintentionally scoops under the cue ball. Is this shot a foul? Here are the pertinent official WPA rules covering this type of shot. Rule 818 indicates that a scoop shot is treated just like a miscue and Rule 617 indicates that it is an unsportsmanlike conduct foul to intentionally miscue or scoop. Otherwise, a miscue or scoop is not a foul. The main purpose for the scoop rule is to prevent shots like this, where there is clear intent to illegally scoop under the cue ball to easily clear an obstacle ball. So, is this shot a foul? The intent was to legally jump over the obstacle ball, but the tip was unintentionally lowered during the stroke, causing a miscue scoop. But a miscue is not a foul unless it is intentional. One could rule that the scoop was not intentional and is therefore not a foul, as with any unintentional miscue. However, one could also rule that the miscue is what enabled the jump with an illegal scoop. This is something that probably needs to be clarified in the rules, because the correct call is not obvious. For example, maybe a statement like this should be added. Any jump shot involving a scoop or a miscue is a foul. Here's the shot in super slow motion. The tip slips, it separates from the cue ball, and the tip hits the cue ball again along with the table at the same time, causing the scoop jump. With the benefit of super slow motion video replay, a double hit is visible, so this particular shot would be called a foul if the video were available, which is usually not the case. Now I'll show a collection of super slow motion clips over a range of tip contact point heights. First, here's a typical legal jump shot. With a lower tip contact point, backspin is imparted to the cue ball, maybe for a draw shot. And with an even lower tip, more backspin is imparted. Here's an example of a partial miscue with no secondary contact or scoop.
And here's the scoop, discussed at length previously. The final thing we looked at was highly elevated jump shots, where the gap between the cue ball and object ball is very small. We wanted to know if they usually involve secondary contact with the shaft to help push the cue ball forward. The cue Venom used for these is a Dr. Popper jump cue. It is very light, with more weight in the solid phenolic end, making it easier to do near vertical jumps. Here's an example shot. Do you think that shot is a foul? Here's the super slow motion video. The hit was clean, barely. The shaft was close to hitting the cue ball after the tip bounced off the table, but there is no secondary contact. The cue ball's trajectory is natural and unaltered. Here's a collection of additional super slow motion examples. If you hit the cue ball too low, a miscue and secondary contact occurs. Here's another example where the cue ball almost had a chance to clear the obstacle ball. This jump is almost successful, but there is secondary contact. If you hit too high on the cue ball, the cue ball gets jammed and doesn't jump much. There are obvious multiple hits here. Here's another example close to clearing the obstacle ball. With the correct tip contact point and cue angle, the jump works with a single clean hit. However, a shot that looks good live or with normal video instant replay can technically be a foul like this one. The cue ball is launched almost vertically and then gets a bump from the shaft to send it forward. This is what I suspect happens with many near vertical jumps, like these classic examples from the link in the video description. Here's a final jump we filmed, this time with impressive draw. Venom jumps over the 8 and draws back to pocket the 8 in the side, just for fun, Venom style. It helps that the shaft follows through into the side pocket instead of into the table, so there is much less chance for a secondary hit. Well, that's it for now, but stay tuned for more to follow. And be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channels, turn on bell notifications, and comment below with your observations and questions. And good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.